Hi everyone, um, I had a little bit of additional material uh, for lesson three. So it's kind of a little bit of an add-on for lesson three, so I'm going to call it lesson 3.5. Uh, it's mainly talking about flat versus nested data, uh, kind of conceptual um, stuff, and uh, <clears throat> a little bit more about serialization, specifically serialization using uh, JSON. Um, so this is an additional lesson for kind of connected with a lot of the stuff in lesson three. Okay, so um, I, I mainly want to kind of talk about the concept of flat data versus nested data. Um, in lesson three, uh, we, we talked about uh, flat data. I talked about a list of lists. Um, so kind of th these two, like so many concept, uh, concepts, you know, these two things, flat data and nested data, they can be, uh, it kind of is a little bit subjective. There's kind of a little bit of room for um, interpretation here. So I just want to kind of describe um, when, for the most general case, um, you know, what, what, it, what constitutes flat data versus nested data. Okay, so um, <clears throat> last time I, I mentioned um, we, were, we used this example, um, and I had this table, uh, and this table uh, had employee names, right, uh, employee numbers, and I said you could have a bunch of other columns here, and we call these columns either attributes or uh, properties uh, many times if we're building like kind of a logical model class, something like that. Um, so, but if we're just talking about it as a table, okay, these are columns, but we know them, you know, everything in this column is going to be a name, everything in this column is going to be a number. Now the rows, really kind of logically what this represents is an individual person. So one row in this table represents one person. So when we talk about flat data, we talk about data that can be represented by a table, by a two-dimensional, generally a two-dimensional table um, for, for the purposes of, of most of the things that uh, I'll discuss, I'll, I'll say uh, a table that's two-dimensional. So we call it flat because it's two-dimensional um, and uh, all right, this the, the relationship, you know, you always have one name for each person. You have one ID for each person. So the, so the relationship between the uh, entity, the object, and its attributes is one to one. All right, so one person has one name, right? And although in, in this case, you know, more than one person could coincidentally have the same name, okay, but th the idea is that you don't have a person that has... Um, five different names. Okay, so people do have first and last names, and so obviously that's w one to you know one to many relationship. But remember, most likely you would have you know this would be the first name column, this would be the s the last name column, right? This would be the middle name column, this would be the ID, right? This would be the state they live in, and they only live in one state, right? So we can kind of work out the attributes of columns such that they're one to one. And if you have attributes that are one-to-one, -one, um, you can generally store the data as uh, what we call flat data. And so this, is, this could be represented by a table very easily. So there are some cases, though, where you can't really represent the data uh, by a table. And th these cases are, are things that probably most of you have dealt with um, or you have seen, but maybe didn't really recognize uh, the, the subtle annoyance of nested data. Um, as being nested data, um, and so I'll kind of give you an example of that. So, um, say we were let's let's clear this, sir. And say we're keeping track of orders. So I'm going to create a column called uh, order ID. I'm going to create a co column called uh, order date. Um, I'm going to create a column called order cost. Okay, so the cost of the order. I'm going to create a column called order. Um, let's say what's something else tax. Okay, so here we have a list of orders, and, and these are orders that maybe they're made online, something like that. We have uh, order one, two, three. Okay, we have order four, five, six. Okay, and this was made in you know 2015. This was made in 2016, right? The cost, say it's $200. 
and this one's one hundred dollars and there's a tax right so this be like six dollars twelve dollars and six dollars something like that okay so all of these things are one-to-one -one with an order so one order has one ID it has one date that it was made uh, it has one cost right so all of the items in the order added up come to one cost uh, and there's also because there's one cost there's one tax right and we, maybe we have a sales tax plus we have a different type of tax plus we have you know all, all the ways that the the uh, government gets its share right but we can list those out we can enumerate those and we can have them as different columns and we can so we can kind of work all the attributes in a way such that it's it's a one-to-one -one relationship <clears throat> so um, say we added a column here and so th so just First, this is flat data, so this would be completely flat because it's a one-to-one -one relationship. But say we ordered a column here, added a column that was order items. Okay, so as long as you had one item in your order, this is fine, right? We could have an order items and we could have a number of items. Okay, so as long as the number of items is always one, we could put the SKU here, right? SKU one, two, three, right? SKU four, five, six, and these are the numbers that represent the products. Okay, and then we could put, you know, there's one, and this is, all, this is always going to be one here. But say this is not one. Say we had a uh, particular order, and the order items, there were maybe four order items. And on top of it, those order items had. Uh, different quantities and we have to record their price um, as well. So what does this mean? So how could we fit this in? So essentially the kind of the question, the logical question, the very foundation of the logical question is or the, the, the uh, statement is create a table or create a data set of all the SKUs, all the items which were ordered. Now our data here contains orders so when we try to put in the, the uh, so one row here represents one order. But when we try to put in the SKUs, right, the items that were ordered, we come across a little bit of problem. So here we might say, well, let's say order item one. And then we have, uh, we'll get rid of this for now, we'll say order uh, item two. Right? And so now we can have SKU one, two, three, we can have SKU four, five, you know, three, four, five. Okay, so we have two items. Okay, but the problem now is that we have to order, add n number of columns to this table in order to ac accommodate more um, uh, items. And what's the upper limit for a number of items that you could order? Well, depending on our business model, right, I mean, it's possible that you could order infinite items, right? We, we, there is no real limit. So the, the problem here becomes, well, we don't really know how many columns we can add. We can't add columns dynamically a lot of times in a database. It's harder to add columns. In addition, right, after we add all those columns, this order, maybe this order only has one item. So now this value is going to have to be null or blank or whatever. So it's going to be kind of a very unnormalized data set. And really the, this problem occurs because the relationship <coughs> between an order and the items in the order is one to many because one uh, order can contain many items and if you uh, take a databases course um, and you deal with database normalization you've already seen this and you, you maybe are approaching it from a different side but this the idea is you know you just normalize it right you have an order table and you have an items table right and then you can tie them together Okay, so, um, and, and either that's, maybe that's going to be with a bridge entity table, or maybe you'll just kind of put the ID in there, and you have line items, something like that. Okay, but the, the problem, right, <coughs> is, so if, if you can change the schema of the database, then fine. Um, but sometimes changing, you know, when we're dealing with Python, um, it's inconvenient to send multiple tables and, 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 uh, relate different uh, data sets together and usually we're taking a snapshot so so the convention the way that we do this is a little bit different right um, than we would in the data model so if you're building a data model again you you'd probably make a relational database 
you'd have primary and foreign keys, and you'd have an order table and an items table, right? And maybe another table to tie them together, and you would you would uh, build out your tables like that, right? And that'd be to store the data. There's another way to do this um, using a nested data structure. So, and this is kind of the convention in uh, when we're trying to send large amounts of data, or we're, we're sending uh, messages containing information about data sets over a network, right? And so the way that we do this is uh, using some sort of nested um, serialized format, usually. So um, I'll kind of look at, we'll kind of talk, so that's really the kind of difference between flat and nested data. So um, quickly, again, just to, to review, uh, when you have flat data, you have it's something that you can put in a table very easily. Uh, but if you have nested data, it's uh, it's more difficult to put in a table. And uh, either the the tendency usually with with um, nested data is well, I want you can probably usually tell that it's nested data. In other words, because you have a tendency to want to add more columns dynamically. You have a, uh, a one to many relationship between the uh, parent class and, and the attribute that you're trying to store. Um, or if you have a need, if you feel the need to put another table inside of a cell. And this is really where the term nested data comes from. So as another solution to this, remember I said that this would be, so let's, let's say, let's call this column order items. And we'll delete this. And I'll say order items and SKU123, but we have to put multiple SKUs in here. So what would be great is if I could take this cell and turn this cell into a table. Right? And so inside of that cell, I'm going to have SKU123. I'm going to say that the quantity was three, and I'm going to say the price was $30. Maybe that's per item, you know, whatever it is. Okay, and then I'm going to have SKU four five six. I ordered two, and the price was fifteen dollars. Okay, and this piece of this information here would be put into. Can't do it in Excel, but well, there, you can, but I won't do it here. Um, this data would be put into this one cell. So it's almost like we need a table within a table. Right, so a table within this, a single cell of a table. And that's a, that's a clear indication that you're dealing with nested data. Okay? Um, so, and, and that the word nested means that you have one thing within another, right? So, so the idea that this data here, uh, you know, you, you need another table to fit inside of this cell is a really good indication that you are dealing with nested data. So that hopefully clears up you know, how to determine the difference between flat and nested data. All right, so um, and one, one other thing that you see in Excel, um, sometimes when people are trying to deal with this, uh, if you're, you've got someone who's putting data in Excel and they don't really understand the dynamics of the data, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll repeat information. So instead of uh, listing orders here, we would list uh, items. And the order IDs would be repeated, right? So you'd have five items and they all have the same order ID. So that's another way to deal with it, to kind of manipulate your data into uh, kind of a unnormalized but at least single table format. Um, and that works, um, but it's inefficient because those order IDs are repeated, right? The order dates are going to be repeated. All the attributes for an order are going to be repeated for every single item in that order. So, uh, you know, there's not a really good solution where you keep the same format of, of uh flat data. Okay, so the formats that uh, typically you're going to deal with that are flat, so these are flat formats, so flat formats are going to be things like uh, CSV, okay, so comma separated values, you know, any any sort of like separated value, so X, uh, SV, I'm just going to say, so this is like tab separated values, or, you know, anything like that, anything that's going to be represented by a table. CSV or any format which represents a table. 
So it could be an Excel file itself, right? To be could be a single file, uh, I guess like a SQL file that represents a s inserts into a SQL table. Okay, so that's that's flat data. Um, nested data are going to be things like, I guess I'll say nested formats. Uh, things like JSON, which we'll talk about, XML. Okay, these are these are kind of I'll just mention these two because these are the, probably the most common. Um, and uh, I'll I'll talk about JSON because it's most commonly used with Python. XML is, in terms of structure and, and what it what it logically represents, it's very very similar to JSON, just a different format. Um, JSON. Um, so we'll we'll talk about the JSON format um, and serialization using that format. Okay, so. Uh, I mentioned um, serialization in the last lesson. We kind of built our own serializer, um, but we can actually, we can actually, I, I didn't use the the normal uh, method for serialization, which is kind of a, a way of serializing data using a existing uh, module. So I'm going to say import JSON, and so. Um, all that you need to know is this this is bringing in another file into Python so that we can use a, what we call a module and we're going to talk more about that and I think in lesson four um, but right now I'm just going to put that there so that we can use the JSON module um, so what I'll do is I will build a uh, I'll show you serialization using the JSON module and it's very simple it's pretty much one line of code so um, alright so first of all let's think about how would we make nested data. So I talked about lists of lists in the last lesson. Um, and so our, you know, so I could say my list equals and I'll say okay so this is a list of integers. Is this data flat or nested? So that's the question. So this this data is is can you represent it in a table? Yes, I can. So what do I do? I just go down here. I say one, two, three, four, five, right? Or I could go this way: two, three, three, four, etc. So it's pretty easy actually this data is one dimensional it's not even two dimensional so yes we can definitely this is definitely can be represented in a flat format okay so that's that's flat data so uh, so I won't mention that so how do we build a structure which has nested data so I'll you know there's there's many many different kind of structures that you could use I mean you can do all sorts of things with lists of dictionaries and that kind of thing but um, I'll make a uh, simple nested data structure uh, which kind of represents those orders so <clears throat> I will create a uh, <coughs> a list called items okay and this is just going to be the SKUs for uh, my item SKUs <coughs> And so these are various SKUs, uh, products that were in an order. Okay, and I just put them in a list and I called it items. I can have another data structure called orders. Okay, um, and For orders, actually, I'm just going to call it order. It's going to be singular. And for order, I'm going to actually make it a dictionary. So notice this versus this. So it's a dictionary. So I'm going to say order ID. And that's going to be one, two, three. I'm going to say order date. And that will be three, four, five. Oh, actually, right. I need an actual date. Two thousand fifteen. 
Okay. Something like that. Okay, and uh, I don't know, we'll just say order cost. And I'll say, since we might do math with it, I'll, I'll store it as a, the value I'll store as a float, right? Okay, um, so there. So this contains all the information about our order. This contains all the information about our items, which really the items are just a list. I could have said, you know, I could have made this a dictionary as well, right? Um, I could have said, this is the item SKU, right? Something like that. Uh, I'm just going to do it this way right now. So finally, <clears throat> what we can do is I can say orders equals a list. And uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to put multiple orders in here. So I'm going to say, uh, well, here, let's just start with one for now, and then we'll add more. So order, OK. And it will be a list with the dictionary as the first item. OK. Um, or, you know, there's another way I could define this. I could do this. I can say, I can make it a list, and then I can say orders dot append, and I can append the order that I just added. Now, <clears throat> run this. If I print orders now, which, so orders represents all the orders, order just represents one single order. If I print this, you can see that actually I've got this kind of funny notation. We haven't seen this before. What this means is we have a list, and inside of that list, each item in the list is a, is a dictionary. And right now we only have one, but if I wanted to, I can actually create another one. So I can say, I can make another order down below, and I can say this is order four, five, six, and maybe it was made in 2016. Change the date. And the cost was $76. Okay, so. Uh, and then I'll, I'll append it here. I'll just define that up above. So I make one order, right? Populate all the data, and I append it to the order list, right? Because orders is just a list. That's all it is. So you can really just literally think of this as a paper list of orders, right? And we're appending this order. Create another order, append it to our orders list. And now at the end, when I print orders, we have one order here, and that's a dictionary, which represents that order. And then we have another order here, and that's order two, or actually I guess the order ID is four, five, six, and that's following that first order. And we can do this indefinitely. We can keep adding items to this order list, orders, order after order and as many orders as we want, we just have to change these attributes. Typically, you would keep these keys the same, just so that when you're going through the orders, you can kind of, um, you know, you, you know what keys you have. So generally, those are going to be the same. And we, we can talk more about the kind of the finer points of, of how to structure data and best practices uh, in a later lesson. So right now, I just want to kind of get down what it means to, to have nested data and how we can build those structures. So the only thing that I haven't included here is the items. So the way that I'm going to include the items is I'm, I'm just going to include it as another attribute. So I'm going to say order items and the value is just going to be items. And notice that this is not in quotes. So what that means in Python is that it's going to take the actual little literal variable, which it happens to be a list, and it will put it as the value. So if I say what is the value, or I say what is the type of order keyed with order items, oops. If I said what is the type of this? 
So order the value on line eight, what is the type of this? You would say it's a list of strings, which in this case, the logical representation is of, of items in the order. But you know, in terms of Python and the types, right, this is a list of strings. Okay. And I will add the same thing here. Uh, although probably the orders would be different, right? So I'll just change the items in this second version. And maybe this one, like we said, it only has one item. So it's only item SKU123. Okay, so let's run this. And now when we run this, we have order ID, we have order date. Okay, and these are very, this is very synonymous with our Excel uh, depiction of the data. The advantage of a data structure like this that's nested is that when we get to something like order items where we were supposed to put in multiple SKUs, etc., we actually have a nice and neat way to do that in a nested data structure. And all that is is we embed another list, another collection with inside that element. So here we have order items, okay, that's the key. And when we look at the value, so the value is the other side of this column here, we see a list. Okay, so it's just a list nested within that value of the dictionary. And actually that dictionary is, list, is nested inside of a list itself. So it's a list with a dictionary inside of it with a list as part of the value for the key order items. So I know it's, it can sound a little bit complicated, right? But it's very mechanical, right? You can have a list with a dictionary inside of it and then a list in that and a list inside of that list and then, right, and it can keep going and you can build all sorts of like uh, complex formats here. But they really don't get too much more complicated than, uh, you know, this thing can be inside of this thing, right? Um, and so... You know, it's it's a matter at that point of just kind of conceptualizing it, understanding what it means logically, and understanding um, the syntax as to, to get there and to store the data like that. What is the advantage of this? Well, the advantage is now we have one single variable in memory, right? And so when we talk about, um, I'll go back to lesson three here, and I talked about these kind of abstraction layers. Um, Okay, where we have UI, memory, and disk. Right now, orders, okay, orders is in memory. Okay, and actually we print it to the UI here, but orders is a single variable which is stored in memory, which contains all the information about all the orders in our system. Okay, and so the so, so why do we want it in a single variable? Well, because now we can use a very kind of generic method to write it to disk. And this is where serialization and um, kind of uh, pre-built serialization modules are really important, particularly JSON. So say we stored these orders. We have all these orders and they're accumulating in memory, right? But we need to store them to disk and then we need to come back later and get them. Or say we need to take these orders and send them to our warehouse, right, over the network. Well, the warehouse probably is running different software. Uh, it does. It certainly doesn't share the same memory as our Python script. So even if it's running the same software, uh, it won't be able to communicate with our script here. So serialization becomes very important. We have to take the this this data, okay, and represent it as a string. Now, one of the things is that print the print function actually already does this for us, and I you know. One thing that you're kind of missing um, here, uh, I guess, is that the print function actually does a serialization because it has to do serialization to print it to the screen. But you have to remember that orders in memory is, is actually, it, it's a whole bunch of things in memory and the way that the memory is allocated in, inside of the computer is, it, it's all over the place, it's, it's represented in a very specific format that's specific to Python it's going to be represented in a different way on my computer than it is on someone else's computer. Even if those computers are identical, right, they're going to store the memory slightly different because of the way that memory is allocated and the way that it's used. So we can't just physically share the same piece of memory, right? You have to keep the kind of the, 
implementation, I, I mean, this is not a computer science, computer engineering course, but you should keep that kind of uh, idea in mind, right? Remember that a, a variable in memory, right, on one computer is going to be stored in a totally different way than it is on another computer. And, right, these, it's not like the memory is stored in the same format on every computer. It's all over the place. And the, the operating system on the computer decides where to put things. Um, so it's, it's kind of all over the place. And we want a way to take it out of memory, put it in a reliable format that everyone understands, a serialized format, and send it somewhere, or store it to disk for another application to read. And this is why serialization is so important. Okay, so um, so let's uh, so I mean I'm I'm and so I know it kind of seems like trivial because we're printing orders and it just prints it like this. And if I save this to a file, this is a serial representation of the data. Okay, but you have to remember that the print statement is basically doing a serialization. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to say, um, and also, so, you know, so I'm going to do this a slightly different way. So I'm going to say um, print JSON dot dumps, and that's what the method is called, uh, and we give it a thing to uh, serialize, and that's going to be orders. So JSON dot dump. So we haven't used a module before, but this name and this name are the same. So we're using something out of this JSON toolkit. And JSON toolkit and the method is called dumps. This means that it uh, takes the, it's. I don't. I'm not exactly sure why they call it dumps, but basically what it's doing is it's doing serialization. It's taking a thing in memory, okay, and saving it. As a uh, as, as converting it to a string, right? Um, and so it's it's going to return a string. Um, and it's very important because <clears throat> this. So I'll just print this. See this looks very similar to the print statement. The only thing that the big difference is that when you do this, it handles special characters. And the really the most important thing about uh, using this serialization format really is just that it is a standard way to serialize okay and it's kind of become a standard uh, JSON stands for JavaScript object notation so it's a way to represent uh, objects ie nested data uh, on the web and it really came from JavaScript um, that's really where it was kind of started to be used and um, if you go around the web and you use Chrome to inspect elements, you'll see that a lot of data gets sent back and forth as JSON data. Actually, I can kind of show you an example of that. Uh, let's see. Kind of a just quick example, just so you can kind of see where this, this kind of thing is actually used. So this is a, just a website for a community uh, center. Um, if I click calendar, well, this virtual machine is very slow. If I click calendar, you will see this calendar pops up, and then all of a sudden we get a bunch of events. Well, those events in this calendar actually come from the server in a JSON format. And if I go through this, I can actually find the call that it makes to the script. It's called JSON events.php. Different programming language, it's not Python. But all of these all these events that are represented here visually have to come to JavaScript and they from the database and they come there in this JSON format. So if we look at the response, the raw response, um, it looks like this. It's actually all in one line. But you can see if I preview it, these are all. What do these look like? They look like dictionaries, right? So, uh, and this is a. It's essentially this is a list of dictionaries. So, many things on the web use this JSON format. It's a. It's a very kind of standard format, um, and that's why it, it's such. It's such a great uh, format to use for for a lot of in a lot of applications. And uh, Python handles it very very easily. 
other programming languages handle it very well too. So um, and and it's becoming it, it's it has overtaken XML. XML is older format, um, but it JSON has become a very popular format for nested data. Okay, so you can see this all over the web, right? Um, and um, <clears throat> So this, this is an identical format. If I sent this data to that script, the keys are different, but, but it could still parse the data and read it, and we'll be able to kind of uh, pull out individual components, individual values, and information about the orders. All right, so why is this important? So we printed it to the screen, so that's kind of not really a big deal. Okay, but... Really, the, the important thing to here to do uh, would be to not necessarily print it to the screen, okay, but very commonly what we would do is write it to a file. So I will uh, write to a file, so I'll say f equals open, and I will say data uh, orders dot, uh, I'll say orders dot json, uh, I'll say orders dot txt, just so we can open it. File extension doesn't really matter that much. And I'll open it in the write method. I'll say f dot write. And I will print JSON dumps orders. And I'll say f dot close. It's as simple as that. So all the work was getting the data into this memory structure. Once it's in the memory structure, we just serialize it right into the file. Okay? So uh, let's see how this works. Okay, information about the orders. And we can go the opposite way. We can deserialize very easily. So I'm going to reverse this, open the file for reading, and I'm going to say uh, f dot read uh, Remember, this is not the order data uh, quite yet. So actually, I'm going to call this order str. So it's really just a string because, remember, this returns a string. So what do we get here? We get a string. So uh, order str has to be deserialized. At this point, it's still in the format of a string. So it's I would consider this data, even though it's not on disk, it's still in a string format. So it hasn't been deserialized yet. So the function to do that, the method to do that, is JSON dot um, loads. I had to think. I was thinking of the PHP function for a second. And uh, we'll call this orders, just to be consistent with our script above. And I'll say JSON dot loads, and I give it a string to load. We could have put f.read directly in here too. That would have worked. Close. Um, we can actually close the file here. And I can say print orders. All right. And that gives us uh, those orders. The other Real kind of and so so you ask like okay so what is the function right what's the what's the point right we went from this to this right they're basically the same thing okay so remember that having the the orders in memory is very nice because we can say okay give me the order ID of order number one so uh, we'll pick pick the first order and we'll pick the uh, order ID key. And we'll see that order ID uh, zero, or order uh, zero. So this is not order ID zero; it's the first order in the list. Um, the ID is one, two, three. And if I do uh, this, the next one, right? We can do four, five, six. I can iterate through them. 
So I can print all the order IDs. So I can do something like uh, four four O in orders print O order ID. And we'll talk more about more complex iteration when we get into JSON uh, formats. Um, I'll probably touch on that a little bit in lesson four. Okay, um, but th this script here is going to print the IDs of all the orders. So it just loops through all these orders in this list and prints the IDs. And this is really the reason why you put these orders in a, a structured format like this. I could also iterate through, you know, I could pick something like, I could do something like Okay, if order date is past this date, then show me all the items in the order, right? Something like that. So I can I can write code that's more specific, but the, the orders have to be in some sort of format in order to do that, some sort of memory format for me to do that efficiently. Okay, so, um, so that's uh, nested versus flat data and serialization using, using JSON and also deserialization. So we'll talk more about iteration um, through these sort of data structures. Uh, this is this lesson uh, 3.5 really should accompany uh, lesson three. Um, there, there's kind of a it's uh, lesson three was quite long, so I wanted to kind of put this on, tack this on as a separate thing. So um, look through this, uh, make sure you understand it. Uh, certainly, message me if you have any questions. Um, uh, but uh, that's that's pretty much uh, most of what you need to know. Um, you know, make sure you're, I think the biggest thing is making sure you're comfortable with this nested format, right? How to create, right, lists of dictionaries, how to recognize that something is a list of dictionaries or a dictionary of lists or, you know, what, whatever that may be, right? Being able to recognize that is extremely, that's probably the most important thing when you're dealing with this, right? Because the amount of code that you need to know is very little, right? you know, essentially you need to know how to serialize and deserialize and that's more or less one line. So really it's, it's, it's being able to recognize this, being able to look at this sort of uh, type of string here and determine, oh, this is a serialized version of a list of dictionaries, right? Um, and we'll go through some more examples that are kind of interesting where we can get JSON data and kind of parse it and, and work with it. All right, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed.